Hi friends, welcome to the kitchen and today let's cook something super simple and it's going to be tofu and a veggies scramble. And in this video I'm going to just give you a short or not so short rundown over the ingredients and then we are going to talk about the recipe itself, the preparation, the method but I'm going to link the timestamps in the description box down below. So if you're not interested in hearing me talk, please just go and fast forward to the moment of cooking. I'm also describing the recipe in the description box down below, but I believe that you, if you're curious about nutrition, there might be something to learn for you in this video, in the beginning of it as well. So as I've been researching in the last couple of weeks, I've been researching several things protein, calcium, and uh, iron intakes for humans, uh, I've come across a lot of data points and a lot of information talking about how you can enhance your iron, enhance your calcium intake and protein intake as well by adding tofu to your diet. What's great about tofu actually is that this is processed soy, hence it's easier for absorption. Processed plant-based protein like tofu is actually a very close to the standards of absorption for animal protein, like for example for eggs. If animal-based protein ranges in its absorbability from around 94 to 97 percent, plant-based protein, the processed one like tofu, like peanut butter, like soy protein isolate can actually range from 93 to 97%. And why is this important, you ask? Uh, because fiber in plant foods is actually one of the reasons why protein is not digested as well as from animal sources, because those uh, protein molecules just hang on to the fibers and fibers can move the proteins uh, down your uh, gut and those can be excreted so you don't get them absorbed. In case you're consuming a plant-based diet, typically they would say that you would need to up your protein intake by around 10% to account for those differences. And now when we talk about choosing tofu, tofus can be prepared in different ways. And while I've been shopping for tofu, I've noticed that not all the manufacturers actually have a label saying how much iron, how much calcium, how much of other minerals is there in the tofu and how much is used in the process. So you would like to go browse your local grocery store and check out what you actually buy because the calcium and the iron content in tofu tend to be quite different from different manufacturers. And here you can see the iron and the calcium content of my tofu on the screen. This is a medium soft tofu or medium firm tofu uh, as you like it. And we are going to cook a scramble. It's also going to be loaded with veggies. So get ready. I think it's a perfect breakfast. You can load it with herbs and you can use the spices that you like to spice up your breakfast a little bit. And while cooking a tofu scramble, there are a couple of ingredients that can help you enhance the flavor of tofu. Tofu is actually pretty bland as it's been claimed by many people, including vegans. So we are about to work with it a little bit. There are a couple of ingredients that can help you enhance the flavor of tofu. First, out of the most widespread and easily accessible is probably smoked paprika. It's giving the smoked flavor to the tofu. Then it comes um, probably the soy sauce or tamari sauce, liquid coaminos, which tastes something like the soy sauce but a little bit different. And my two personal favorites, the first one is nutritional yeast. I leave the link for the nutritional yeast that I'm getting from iHerb. If you don't have one in your local store, it lasts you for ages. Also nutritional yeast, why it's cool for vegans. It is normally enriched. This is why it's nutritional yeast. It's fortified with vitamins B, sometimes with selenium, but be careful with selenium. It's um, toxic in high doses. And also vitamin B is uh, one of the common vitamins that nutritional yeast is being enriched with. And people who are following a strict plant-based diet 
tend to not have any good reliable source of vitamin B12. So here is your tip. Do try to use some nutritional yeast, although it's quite hard to use as much as it is needed. So you might want to consider a supplement. And I digress. Let's move to the final tip and the final spice that's like it's not even a spice, it's the black salt and it's not the black salt because it's mixed with pepper. No, it's a special kind of salt. It has this sulfury uh, flavor and smell. It reminds me of eggs so, so much. Uh, I first discovered it while using a subscription mailboxes. It was such a great find. Uh, you can also find it on iHerb. I'm also going to link it in the description box down below. Okay, we got tofu, that's good. But what else do we have? Uh, of course, we have some aromatics. Nothing goes without aromatics. Uh, it's going to be our onion and garlic and also I'm going to be using kale uh, instead of spinach in this recipe. You can go with both either kale or spinach or other leafy greens. I'm preferring kale instead of spinach in this recipe because of the oxalate content in spinach which makes the iron less absorbable and this is my current health goal is to up my iron intake. You're what you digest and not only what you eat so I'm just targeting to up my uh, hemoglobin levels and this is why I'm choosing uh, kale over spinach. Kale has a more absorbable iron in it. I'm going to be using a kale stem together with onion and garlic just because I don't want to waste it. It's still perfectly fine. So I'm just going to separate the leaves from the stem because stem is of course much more sturdier and I'm going to chop it all off in the first batch of our cooking. As you know, we always do batch cooking and it's going to go first onto the pan. So now we got our tofu, we got aromatics, we talked a little bit about our kale. So uh, what's next? We are going to use a little bit of mushrooms. You can choose the mushrooms that are enriched with vitamin D. Actually, mushrooms can produce their own vitamin D uh, in particular, vitamin D2, it's a little bit less bioavailable than vitamin D3, which is mostly produced by animals. Still, vitamin D2 is bioavailable and how mushrooms produce it, same way as we do, as we produce vitamin D3, they've been exposed to UV light in the factory, in the manufacturing or like farming facility. If you imagine I live in the desert right now and here the land is not very abundant for growing stuff, uh, but even if it's produced in the vertical gardens, the mushrooms can still be exposed to UV lamps. Okay, cool. Uh, we have our mushrooms. Uh, some mushrooms can also be quite rich in iron and I'm going to insert the screenshot here so you can see how much iron is in champignons. And we are going to follow up with bell peppers. Bell peppers, if you know, they, these are red bell peppers, same thing as green and yellow bell peppers, just a different state of maturity, a di different stage of maturity, if you will. As you might know, red, yellow, orange fruits and vegetables are red because they're rich in carotenoids, and this is one of the reasons. And bell pepper is not an exception here. So red bell peppers are richer in carotenoids than the green bell peppers. And also they're quite high in vitamin C. The difference between the two is uh, that the vitamin C is heat sensitive. So whenever you put it on a pan, it tends to disintegrate. It's also light sensitive. If you're doing any kind of skincare routine that involves vitamin C, you might notice that sometimes vitamin C oxidizes and uh, the liquid turns brown vitamin C stopped working, it oxidized. But speaking of carotenoids, they tend to increase their bioavailability while they're being heat processed. But both carotenoids 
and vitamin C help iron to be more bioavailable, more absorbable, which is great, a good thing to consider if you're on a plant-based diet and your main source of iron is not supplements, it's your dietary source, so you can absorb more and utilize more throughout your body. We also talked about kale a little bit, here is the kale. Apart from kale, I'm going to add a little bit of fresh basil, try not to bruise it, although it's not the freshest basil in the world, but I'm doing my best just twisting the leaves together and then going through them with a sharper knife, if you will. It's not the sharpest knife in the world, but as sharp as I could make it. The spices, you can use any spices that you like. The good ones to include are going to be, of course, turmeric, is going to be black pepper. Black pepper enhances the absorbability and bioavailability of turmeric by 2000%. Just think about it, it's literally crazy. Apart from turmeric, apart from black pepper, I'm also going to use some black salt because I just like this flavor. And I'm also going to add some nutritional yeast in the very, very end. I'm also going to use some chives because these are herbs and I really like them. Some coriander or parsley leaf dried will also help quite a bit. And uh, smoked paprika, I really love it. I just mixed all the flavors that I love together. You can also add some salt if sodium intake is not your concern. If you are not using iodized salt, please do remember to check on your thyroid and your iodine status, as it's quite important in regulating hormones all over your body. And in the end, uh, we do have two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. As I mentioned, normally nutritional yeast is an enriched uh, nutritional yeast, although it doesn't have to do anything with the yeast, it's deactivated. So it just has this cheesy, nice flavor and also adds some color to your tofu. Uh, of course, I did forgot, forget about tofu, by the way. We just mash it with our fingers or with the fork. Uh, it doesn't have to be very pretty, it doesn't have to be in cubes or anything like that and it's ready to absorb the flavors. Starting, of course, with aromatics. Batch number one is ready to go. We are simmering around 60 milliliters or maybe like 30 milliliters of water here and we add our aromatics in. If they're going to start burning, just keep adding a little bit of water. You can also consider adding some oil if oil is not your concern. However, if you're trying to lose weight, please keep in mind it's better to use this prayer uh, oil, like one or two pumps, because one tablespoon of oil can contain up to 120 calories or in that range, which adds to the meal, but it's very calorie dense, but not very filling as you can imagine. So we are leaving the aromatics to simmer for around three to five minutes till they start to give out the flavor. And next we are going to add the second batch, which consists of bell peppers, of mushrooms, and of tofu. The spices are also going to go in there and uh, we are just leaving it to simmer for around five minutes. Do remember that mushrooms tend to give out quite some water, so if you don't want it to be too watery, either remove the lid, uh, but I would do it after the mushrooms give out some water, maybe after one minute, remove the lid and uh, let it all evaporate a little bit. It will give you less liquid in the final dish. In the next batch, we are going in with the greens, kale in this case, some basil. If you're really feeling like spicing it up a little bit, add some coriander, some parsley, and just cook it for around three minutes. Um, after this, we add nutritional yeast and keep just sauteing it slightly for around one, two minutes till it all fuses together and the flavors come together really, really nicely. You can start noticing the flavor. It's very saturated and the tofu does hold a lot of flavor inside not bland by any means. And that's it, we are done. Cooking overall takes maybe around 15 minutes. 
10 to 15 minutes to wash everything and chop and prep everything. So from the easiness perspective, from my side, it takes five out of five. It's very straightforward, no pre-prep needed. Just chop everything and you are pretty much done. I also like to evaluate meals in terms of versatility and what other things you can be adding. Can you substitute one ingredient for the other ingredient? Well, here the, the crucial ingredients here, I would say is nutritional yeast. Uh, black salt mm, is uh, optional. I would say smoked paprika is also optional. Just add the flavors that you like, the spices that you like. Also, you can add a little bit of cinnamon. It's going to be almost noticeable if you add like a quarter of a teaspoon. It's going to have anti-inflammatory properties. It's going to give a different dimension to the dish, almost noticeable. You're also going to enjoy it. Probably some nutmeg is also going to be quite nice. Coriander, cumin. You can go crazy in terms of spices. You can add a little bit of chili to spice it up. Overall, I would rate it as five out of five from the versatility perspective. Also, you can use and replace different other herbs and um, as I said, coriander, parsley, uh, you can use chives, you can use um, scallions or spring onions. You can use kale instead of spinach, spinach instead of kale, chard, combination of different herbs. You can you add oregano, you can add some thyme, experiment, feel free, and try to find the combination that you really enjoy. Uh, from the texture perspective, this one deserves a special mention. I'm typically not trading anything on the texture, although, don't I? I think I do, I actually do. This one is five out of five for me. I think this is because the kale is quite sturdy. It's sturdier than spinach. Also mushrooms give it a chewier texture. So there is a bite to the whole meal. And tofu is soft. Well, although it's medium soft tofu, overall tofu is of course soft. So it's a very interesting combination. Uh, and you can combine it with quite a lot of things. Mushrooms are also a source of protein, of course. Overall, I think like it's a really nice combination. You can add tomatoes, you can add chickpeas. I think chickpeas would be really nice and you can make a really filling breakfast out of it overall. Overall, a total five out of five for me. This one is great. There are some tofu recipes which underperform in terms of flavor and um, some miso soups can give you this kind of bland tasting flavor. I like it quite a bit. It allows you to fit in a little bit more vegetables into your regimen. So I love it a lot. Highly, highly, highly recommended as part of your diet or as one of the variants of your protein loaded breakfast. Thank you so much guys for watching. I really enjoyed cooking this recipe. I think it's fast, simple, fun, and uh, I hope you liked it too. I hope you give it a try. Tell me what you think. Share your opinion down in the comment section uh, below. If you feel like it, please support this video with a like and support this channel. Subscribe costs virtually nothing, but it helps me so, so much. And uh, I really appreciate your support. If you want to connect with me on Instagram, here is my Instagram. There I'm sharing more nutritional tips and how to make the best out of nutrition. But please do remember, I'm not a doc. I'm not a scientist, not a nutritional scientist at least. And do not take any health and medical advice from social media. Do remember to double check any nutritional facts because this is related to your health and it is so, so, so important especially in terms of nutrition, there is a lot of pseudoscience uh, out there. And I really appreciate if my content is a starting point for your own research. If you feel inspired to eat a little bit more veggies and greens today, this would also be great. Uh, a little bit of more versatile meals. I will consider my purpose to be accomplished in this sense. Thanks again for joining and I hope to see you next week. Bye.